You guys probably remember when we built this new door for the tortoises, and the fact is, is that originally I thought, should we put a latch on it? And you know what? I actually didn't mind the fact that the tortoises could come out because typically, oh, look who's coming out. It is the guy that get made the big tortoise escape last night. Well, the fact is, is that typically these guys will come out and hang out during the day, but they always go back to sleep at night. Well, last night, we had a little bit of a ghost running around here in the Reptarium, and uh, we caught it on surveillance. Let's go ahead and roll that and see what my buddy Steve did. So obviously Franklin at some time during the evening decided to get out of his actual enclosure, but the funny part was when he made it over to the stool. That's right, you see, he actually somehow went underneath the stool and then got caught in the stool. Could you imagine if someone was walking by the windows and saw this stool just mysteriously floating around the entire place? When we first saw the footage on the security, we were like, how in the heck is that stool? moving is the place haunted or something but obviously it's only haunted by Steve the leopard tortoise oh hey guys how are you doing do you guys like my shirt right here you know I've always been a Marilyn Monroe fan but uh, you know you guys can get this shirt and a whole bunch of other apparel and you can be helping the reptile hobby you can go to reptilearmy.com we donate the proceeds to educational things 10% goes to USR and then the rest goes to other really cool educational things go to reptilearmy.com and you guys can be part of the army. This next clutch is definitely a banger. You know that I love the Lori Project. There's lots of cool stuff that's gonna be happening this year and next year with the Lori Project. I'm super excited about it, obviously. This happens to be a Lori pinstripe that's bred to a Lori, so we could get some Super Lori, Super Lori pinstripes, a whole bunch of combinations thereof. Should be pretty cool. Looks like this girl is wrapped around a beautiful clutch eggs. Let's hope they're all fertile. Oh, I see a couple sluggers, no! Ah! Well, it's mainly good eggs, but there are a few slugs there. It looks like one, two, three, and four sluggers. Oh no, but that's right because we do have a bunch of good eggs as well. So we'll get these guys over here in an egg box really quick. It's so weird because this is actually the third clutch bred by that male and he fathered 100% fertility in the first two clutches and that Lori Leopard one, that was the one I was really excited about. So she had a bunch of good eggs. There was 11 good eggs and no slugs in this one. Unfortunately, in this one, we've got two, four, six good eggs and four slugs. So it would have been a 10 egg clutch. No idea why the fertility was a little bit off but with the odds you should have one in four on average should be super and one in six on average would be a super lorry pinstripe so still a lot of potential good stuff there and we still have a bunch of lorry stuff this year so it's going to be pretty amazing regardless uh, six eggs i'll take it as you can see steve is still at it he made his way around the entire zoo definitely didn't take any problem with carrying that stool around with them absolutely hilarious how my motion sensors didn't trip i have no idea but watching him cruise around with that huge stool head back that was pretty comical that little package here from Erica Atkins. She actually is in Pennsylvania. This is so light, I think she sent me air, but it cost her $4.50. So I'm thinking it's not air. So let's go ahead and see what Erica actually sent me. It's a ballpoint pen, big. Okay, now I have a feeling that's just a box that she used. So what could possibly be in here, you know? The suspense always gets me, there's no doubt about it. Oh, wait a second, here we go. Oh, look at how cute. It's a little tortoise, it's a little like knit tortoise. That is absolutely incredible. Thank you, Erica. And of course, a very long note that I will probably read off of air. It says, Dear Brian and Lori, I love watching the relationship between you two. I love and respect that you have each other for inspiration and all. I live in PA and watch your channel on Facebook every single day. Yeah, by the way, it's on Facebook, it's on YouTube. You can watch whichever. Regardless, she ended up making this. I'll read the rest of it. So thank you so much, Erica. I appreciate you beyond belief. That is absolutely adorable. Yeah, I wonder what the animals were actually thinking as he was cruising around the zoo at the night with, with a stool on his back. I wonder if they were thinking like, what is that? Because you can kind of see some of the animals moving around as he's moving through the reptarium. I think it's absolutely hilarious. And listen, I love the fact that he had himself a little adventure. And in the end, he really didn't hurt anything. So he just had a lot of fun. So what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Here, I got some tarot roots. First off, that says, oh yeah, tarot roots. I know, I read it. You ready? Pull this, pull this thing, got it, ready? That's not what you're supposed to do with that. <laughs> you guys know what time it is, don't you? Egg time, egg time, egg time. Egg time. And this actually is a quad head 
corn snake. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I'm not sure what it's quad hat for. Lori keeps the records. It just means that there's four genes that it's actually had for. And I know it's bred to this male right here, which is actually what they call a white out, which I believe is a charcoal albino lavender, but I could be wrong about that too. Lori has an understanding of what the heck is going on here. I just am collecting the eggs. And this is a beautiful clutch of eggs at that too. I'll go ahead and just kind of put these aside really quick. Beautiful corn snake too. Really pretty, kind of normal. We'll clean her cage up. We'll get her some fresh water, get her all set. And we'll see how many eggs that she actually gave. And I'll have to ask Lori here in a little bit what the genetics are behind these things because she just marks the cage. I don't even know what's going on. We've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 beautiful eggs. I tell you what, that's a nice clutch. And this is actually a hat, snow, scaleless, diffused corn or what they would call blood red and it's actually bred to this beautiful scaleless blood red i mean take a look at that monkey right there Ooh, dog i tell you what, that thing is gorgeous so let's hope that this girl has some beautiful eggs because this could be a really nice clutch right here so i'm going to set her down right here and just take a quick look here we go yep looks good not a very big clutch to be honest with you but definitely a nice clutch so we'll go ahead and get mama back in here we'll get her all set up get her cleaned up get her some fresh water and all settled in ready to get rehydrated in order to breed again and here in a very short period of time regardless we have two four six eight beautiful eggs again that male is gorgeous can you imagine how good that's going to look when these hatch and that last, one last spin around the reptarium certainly seemed like steve had a really good time running around there's no doubt about it but all adventures eventually have to come to an end and in this case he ended up hitting the floor mat that had some rubber on it and it was able to dislodge the stool and then he was able to go back in his pen and probably get some well-deserved rest not every clutch is a big clutch, right? We only had two eggs in this clutch. And unfortunately, I want to show you guys what a egg looks like that basically goes full term and then isn't any good. There's definitely nothing good in this egg. You can see how it, number one, it's stinky. You guys can't smell it, but trust me, it doesn't smell good. But it's got green, it's sweating. This is unfortunately not a good egg. So we only had one egg in this clutch. The mama was just this beautiful pastel ghost, which is a pastel in a recessive mutation of hypo, or what they call a ghost. And the male was this lemon blast hat for ghosts. So, and that wouldn't be a super complicated genetic clutch, but, but we might produce something cool with one egg, you never know. So I don't know what's gonna happen with this one egg. Not every clutch is gonna be a six, seven, eight, nine egg clutch. In this case, we just have one egg to cut today, which will be fine. Let's jump in and see what we got. And who knows, maybe we'll get something really cool in this one egg, or maybe we'll get a normal. Have no idea what's gonna come out of it. And, ooh, wait a second here, this is really weird. Okay, this is a hypoval python which makes zero sense because it was a normal bred to something that wasn't hypo. And we've got a hypo or a ghost ball python. Well, I don't know, that's crazy. That, it puts even more of a mystery in things. Unless it's something different. I think it's a hypo ball python. It sure looks like a hypo ball python, but it shouldn't be. So I don't really know what the deal is with that. that is definitely a mystery. So the mystery continues. This happens to be a lesser female, which is an incomplete dominant bred to a banana GHI. Now that GHI and lesser is really cool. It's allelic. So they produce what they call a GHI lesser, obviously. Then you mix a banana gene in it and there could be some real bangers in here. So let's hope mama has some good eggs. Looks like it's pretty good. I'm liking it so far. Oh yeah, not too bad. Oh, she's really hanging on to eggs. She's like, no, I'm not taking away. Mama, you did really good. You did amazing. Let's go ahead and get these eggs out of here and see how many eggs she actually has in here. Looks like we got, unfortunately, one slugger. I tell you what, it seems like a lot of clutches have one slug this year, but the majority have been fertile and that's all that really matters. We've got two, four, six beautiful eggs. Again, lots of combinations of banana lesser, banana lesser GHI, banana GHI, all that type of stuff. So it should be a really good clutch to cut in 57 days. You know what's really interesting? Obviously, Ivy is absolutely ginormous. I mean, look at how big she is, but that's not what's interesting. Although that is interesting. The fact is, is that when I feed her a large meal, she does these urates, like these, you know, essentially they're like calcified urine, essentially what it is. They call them urate, but I don't really get it. I've never seen another snake do that. And she only does it when we do giant meals. But when we do a giant meal, she'll do a urate like this, sometimes two or three times a day. Now she's never actually passing stool. She's just passing this yellow urate that really doesn't smell very good, by the way. So we have to constantly clean this cage to keep the area smelling good because it's literally like concentrated urine smell. So it's just really weird. If anyone does know why anacondas out of all snakes do that, put in the comments. I'd like to know because I have no clue, but every single time it happens, 
But if we feed her small meals, she doesn't do it. So I don't know, it has to have something to do with like the metabolism and the way they're digesting their food, where maybe she's like, you're, I don't really even know to be honest with you. The other thing that's interesting about anacondas is that, again, if you feed a 19 or 20 pound pig to her, she literally only has a small poop, that's it. Whereas a big snake like Lucy will have giant turds. This girl actually doesn't, I, I don't know why I'm talking about turds, but the point is, anacondas are really interesting and I'd love to know more about their digestive. Extraordinary toilet brush cleaner. Pretty excited, we're actually launching a new virtual thing here at the Reptarium. Every Tuesday, we actually have two courses of virtual. So if you have kids and you wanna have a cool little story time, actually lasts 20 minutes. And what happens is that Aislinn, our animal educator, will read this book and show off an animal. The first one in the series is The Day Jimmy's Boa Ate the Wash. That's right. And we have like Verde, one of my favorite kids' books about reptiles. We're gonna do that every week. So you can go to reptarium.com if you guys wanna do a cool little Zoom virtual tour and keep your kids busy for 20 minutes learning about reptiles. My beautiful boy here, toothless. Look at this animal right here. Of course, it's a black dragon. This is just one of the most amazing animals that I have. Just as soon as it was born, it was being socialized. We got it when it was only like seven days old. And I mean, I tell you what, out of all the water monitors that we have, he is definitely my buddy because Elvis is amazing, but Elvis still has that little touch of nervousness to him. This guy is so socialized and the black dragons are actually an interesting story. There's actually two localities of them. There's the Kumani Islands, which are actually with the majority of the animals Animals, including toothless here are from the Kamani Islands and they actually stay a little bit smaller but then there's the Sumatran version of them that get really large I mean much larger than the Kamani Islands but the fact is it's a melanistic animal right so it's a recessive mutation so you can breed a melanistic to a normal and you'll get het melanistic so what happens on the Kamani Islands as well as the Sumatran version is a population of them actually proliferated by breeding you know siblings and stuff like that and now you have an entire island in Kumani that almost all are black dragons and then there's a portion of animals in Sumatra that are black dragons as well. Just a really cool animal, super, super nice. And for whatever reason, most of the Kumanis are super docile as well. It may just because they were valuable and people worked with them right out of the egg. It may be the actual disposition of that particular mutation because sometimes mutations can pass down temperament or disposition as well. Regardless, tooth, this is absolutely amazing. Hope you guys enjoyed the great tortoise escape. That was absolutely pretty funny. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor right here. You can hit a playlist of a couple of my other videos it helps me out a lot on this side please subscribe to this channel i love you for it have an absolutely wonderful day reptile army remember be kind to somebody and i promise i'll see you tomorrow